Hi, this is Peter Taiti and Manos Brilakis from the Minneapolis Heart Institute and the Cardiovascular Innovations Foundation, presenting case 120 for the manual of CTO interventions. This is a case of uh, undergrade dissection reentry facilitated by the retrograde approach. The patient was an elderly man who presented with a non ST elevation myocardial infarction and he also had ischemic ventricular tachycardia. He had previous coronary bypass and on stress testing he had uh, an EF of 35% as well as inferior ischemia. His coronary angiogram demonstrated occlusion of the medial AD with a large diagonal branch, a CTO of the proximal circumflex, a patent Lima to LAD graft with excellent flow. There was a CTO of the right coronary artery with an occluded uh, saphenous vein graft to the right coronary, and there was also an occluded saphenous vein graft to the circumflex. In this patient, given the ischemia in the inferior wall on the stress testing, we decided to perform PCI of the right coronary artery CTO. The proximal cap was ambiguous with several branches originating in the proximal course of the vessel. The length was approximately 30 millimeters. Distal vessel was of good quality and was filling both by ipsilateral epicardial collaterals, but also there was some filling from septal collaterals. Therefore, given the uh, proximal cap ambiguity, our first plan was to do multiple angiographic projections to see if we can clarify the ambiguity, followed by retrograde, and then leaving ADR as a third option. And this is the general algorithm about how to approach uh, proximal cap ambiguity. The first step in such cases is to do better angiogram in multiple projections to see if we can clarify the ambiguity and determine the actual course of the vessel. Another way to overcome the ambiguity is to do a CT angiogram and determine what is the course of the vessel. If there is a side branch next to the proximal cap, one can advance an intravascular ultrasound catheter into that side branch and use that to help guide crossing into the vessel. And the fourth undergrade option is to do the so-called move the cap techniques, which involve getting into the subintimal space proximal to the occlusion and then use a knuckle guide wire to cross the occlusion, followed by distal re-entry. The fifth option is to do the retrograde approach, which uh, can help overcome the proximal camp ambiguity, but may carry slightly high risk for complications, and that is why it's usually reserved for later into the algorithm. In this particular case, we did multiple uh, injections in different projections using a, a uh, Caravel and Turnpike Spiral Microcatheter and various guide wires. The lateral view can sometimes be extremely useful for right coronary artery lesions. However, in this case, it did not really open up the proximal cap. It's still confusing whether the vessel is coming into this branch or in a different location. So given the difficulties with undergrade crossing, we decided to attempt uh, the retrograde approach. This is uh, surfing uh, through a septal collateral branch and using a Sion guide wire, we were able to advance it distally. It was uh, going into the right posterior lateral probably, so it was moved back and then redirected. And eventually it did find its way distally into the mid uh, right coronary artery. Unfortunately, we were unable to advance a Caravel microcatheter over this guide wire possibly because the septal collaterals were small. We changed that to a turnpike LP and this also failed to cross. And this is one not uncommon problem, which is the wire goes through the collateral, but then the microcatheter fails to follow. And these are some steps that one can take to overcome this challenge. The first one is try different manipulations. For example, one can just push the microcatheter or can rotate it. Some microcatheters can be rotated like the Turnpike and the Corsair, where some others, like the Caravel and Finecross, uh, it's much harder to be rotated and probably should be just advanced pushing. Another option is to increase the support, most commonly with the guide catheter extension. If that doesn't work, one can try a different microcatheter. For example, in our case, we did try the Caravel as well as the Turnpike LP. One could try a shorter microcatheter, sometimes those have better transmission of torque from the back to the front end. 
Another option is to, to dilate the collateral, usually with a 1.0 to 1.5 mm balloon at low pressure. Importantly, that's only for septals. We never dilate the epicardials. And another option is to remove the guide wire and exchange it for a stiffer one, which might provide more support. But of course, that means that we lose um, the crossing that has been achieved with the existing wire. If uh, all these things fail, alternative option is to just leave the retrograde guide wire as a marker and do undergrade crossing, or try to cross with the already crossed through the collateral guide wire, if it's a short occlusion, sometimes that wire might be able to cross retrograde into the proximal trilumen. And finally, if everything else fails, one may abandon this collateral and try a different collateral. In this particular case, after we tried uh, to advance a microcatheter and failed, we decided to use it as a marker of the distal trilumen position and having the retrograde guide wire to the mid-right coronary helped us direct an undergray knuckle with a filter XT guide wire that is now going around the area of the retrograde guide wire. So now we know that we are within the so-called vessel architecture. We then debated about um, doing um, the reverse car technique, um, but we had difficulty advancing balloons over the undergrade guide wire. So we ended up doing um, undergrade uh, re-entry attempt. We advanced the stingray balloon to the mid-right coronary artery. And then uh, we did the double blind stick and swap. We did uh, stick with an Astato 20, which is a stiff guide wire. And then uh, uh, we used a Gaia second wire that is exiting proximal to the proximal port of the stingray balloon. And since we have the retrograde wire as a marker, we now see that this, the Gaia second is actually overlaid over the retrograde guide wire. Therefore, that means that we've crossed into the distal true lumen. We use the inch warming technique to advance a guide catheter extension. Balloon is inflated, deflated, the guide extension is advanced and goes nicely all the way to the mid-right coronary artery. Predilated the lesion and then place tens all the way from the distal to the proximal right coronary artery. And um, also did a intravascular ultrasound to ensure good stent expansion and stent strat apposition. And that provided us with a nice final angiographic result with a TIMI3 flow into the distal vessel and the patient actually did have a resolution of his ventricular tachycardia. So several things we learned from this case. One is the potential challenges of CTOPCI in previous CABAT patients. Second, how to approach proximal cap ambiguity. Different geographic projections didn't work. We did the retrograde approach that helped uh, clarify where the distal vessel location was, but also we could not advance the retrograde equipment. And that is why we end up using undergrade sexual re-entry again. The third thing is what to do if the retrograde guide wire crosses the collateral, but the microcatheter does not, which involves using different microcatheters, more support, potentially ballooning only septal collaterals. And finally, in this particular case, the retrograde guide wire was used as a marker of the distal true lumen and as a marker for undergrade dissection re-entry attempts for the undergrade wire to cross into the distal true lumen. Thank you.